Hello, this is the Bristol Underground Church. Bridget here having a cup of tea, coffee, and our, here's our roaring log fire. And we're, oh, we're going to speak today about... Yes, we're going to talk today about fast and prayer. Um, I myself have done like a 40 day fast in which I gave up drinking lots of coffee, um, reading papers that I might just glance in the shops in the day, magazines just to look, see how everyone's getting on in Hollywood, and all the rubbishy things that we waste our time doing. Yeah. Cause God led me into this fast, and for 40 days a couple of other people joined, Simon also done it, and mm. um, we were massively blessed. We were blessed in many ways with this 40 day of prayer and fast. We gave it all over to God, and we kept praying and fasting, and God kept giving His words, and I wrote some of them down. At the end of the fast, we had a what would you call it? A sort of a person got saved as well, yeah, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. We had a word of prophecy, which um, we sort of are giving out to the churches because we feel that God gave us a mandate for fast and prayer, and how it helps. You know, Would you like to share the basics of this um, prophecy? Yeah. Go on then. Basically, it's a prophecy for the church, and God wants His people to come closer, just a closer walk with God. Mm. Yeah. Uh, to do this, way. we need to humble ourselves and pray, and give up all sin. Simon's got Corinthians, is it Chronicles or Corinthians? Chronicles. Chronicles 7.14 uh, First go on a 20 day prayer and fast, which will be good for every Christian. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, and give up TV, coffee, worldly magazines, and things that are really basically taking your money and your time away. Um, we'll go into the closet. Um, prayer closet. Prayer closet. God requires that we have a sort of a very good holiness. quality time with him, which brings about holiness and a closer walk with God, um, and walk in his ways, put on our full armour every day, because as Christians we're, we are in a battle, we have got enemies all over the place, so we put on our full armour every day, Stop and, and roll. Yes, and we walk closer with God. Uh, he gave me Psalms 133, Psalms 91, Revelation 3. Uh, God wants to restore the fivefold ministry in the churches, believe it or not. That includes <laughs> me and Bridget. Yeah, and I think basically this is oh, yeah where lots of churches have problems because they don't always understand the fivefold ministry, which is prophets, it was apostles first. Me. Pastors, teachers, mm. evangelists, yeah. And when you've got the fivefold ministry operating in a church, then things happen. Because God says that without vision, his people perish. So unless you have a vision of where you're going with God and what you're doing, it's not going to happen. So people tend to be going around in circles. I believe God's preparing us here in Bristol, in England, the UK and perhaps all over the world in many parts, Ireland, uh, Northern oh. Ireland, Scotland, yeah, Wales, God's preparing us for a revival. Sort of a renewal, I think, at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Right. So he's getting us, you know, the Great Commission, every Christian has this, it's not just for one or two. The Great Commission basically means to go out into all the world, could be a workplace, could be the hospital you work in, could be the street where you sweep and you meet people every day. Wherever you are in life, on television, you can spread the gospel to the lost. Because ev perhaps most people around you are lost and they're seeking. So, Same. yeah, for instance, Simon takes the gospel out onto the street. I do as well. And um, at the moment, I believe God wants to see people delivered, healed. I talk about the mosque I've been going to. Yeah. Me. No, go on, you finish what you want to say. Heal. Well, God wants to heal people, deliver them from drugs. I believe it's going to be a year when God's going to supernaturally deliver people from all kinds of addictions. 
whose addictions ruin people's lives, whether it's drugs, alcohol, anything porn, and many are addicted to that, gambling, and many are addicted to that. These things mm -hmm. take your yeah, they take your money away, they take your health away, they take your soul away, and basically God is waiting for people to give up sin and turn to him. Amen. And he's got lots of great things to give to his people. So let's try and talk a little bit about his evangelism on the streets and his uh, mosque. Thanks. Well, I, I, yeah, I've been to the local mosque a few times. I'm, I'm friends with the imam. I've been invited in. Uh, I'd say that it's great for Christians to go there. Um, I've had a lot of support on Facebook from mm -hmm. Christians um, praying for me and stuff about this. It's really good. Um, have good dialogues. The first time I went in to the local one was in Ramadan. They invited me for a meal. I went on my own, first of all. The next day I came with a Jewish friend, a Christian called Harry. We had an excellent time. Um, we talk um, totally as equals. Um, there's respect. Um, we talk obviously about um, Islam and Christianity. And a word I'd say to the government is, you know, do not stifle free speech because we all get along very well and human beings are designed to talk over differences, okay? And the way to multicultural society is to allow that free speech don't try and gag people with laws, you know, you don't know what's going on on the street with 60 million people all in different environments, it is, you're out of your depth, um, so just don't, um, you know, be afraid if any government are listening to this, and I hope they will, don't be afraid, the best way for peace is dialogue, mm. that's why mm. they have peace talks in the, in the, all over the world, don't they, peace right. talks, okay, mm. talk, in other words, peace comes from talking, okay, that's my first message to the government, and secondly, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, as I say, we have excellent talks, we gave them a whole load of, um, John, of Gospels, New Testaments, they took them, now this is really key, this I think is what I'm about to say is about the biggest thing I know for world peace, it says in Surah 3.3, which is the Quran, their chapter 3 verse 3, Surah 3.3, you know what I'm going to say, don't yeah. you? That the Torah and the Gospel are from God. And the Torah is the first five books of the Old Testament. That's their, their Quran says that that is from God. And then it says the Gospel is from God. That's the New Testament. So the Christian Bible, the Jewish Old Testament, the, Bi the, the Quran says both are from God. So we should have peace between the three religions. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. And that's my message that's a wonderful message. Now I've been sharing that with, with my Muslim friends um, out, of a, out of a Quran actually that they gave me, you know, I found it. And on the back of my second meeting I had a two hour conversation with this guy. He really wanted to know. He was an ex-Sikh, uh, no, an ex-Hindu, and he really wanted to know about Christianity. Um, talked for a couple of hours, gave my book to the Imam, my autobiography, he, he's, he's had a look at it. So it's really great, you know, I encourage you to go out, as Bridget was saying, spread the gospel wherever you are. Yeah. Don't be afraid. I'm friends with every Muslim in my area. Some of them are pretty committed Muslims, you know, but we get along. We have respect, you know, the sign of respect, this and all, all that business and, you know, touching, touching fists like you do. You know this yeah. one? Um. The street. So it's all very cordial. It's all very good and the gospel is making headway. I give out tracts with Bridget and we've noticed in the last year that there's a bigger take up of leaflets than ever before. They know what's on the, what it's about because I have Jesus written on my clothes and the, and the tract says heaven and everyone's taking them from all walks of life. There is an opening for God's gospel. For the love of God, he's Amen. opening, he's got an anointing. He wants to save people. Um, he loves us all, he made us all. He sent Jesus to die um, on the cross to forgive us our sins. He took the price of our sins. As someone, um, Mrs. Swagger, wasn't she, was saying last night on yeah. TV, mm -hmm. other, only in Christianity does God pay the price for our sins, okay? The forgiveness. He took the punishment on the cross. So it's, it's ultra good news to give us a place in heaven. The gospel makes God happy. I can feel it have him happy now. So that's, that's what I do. I was called to street evangelize and 
you know, I encourage you, brethren, sisters, to do what Jesus said, which was the Great Commission. Go and make disciples, you know. You shouldn't be told, even have to be told to, to spread the gospel, because if you know, when you know the way to heaven, you should be really, like, bending over backwards to, to spread the gospel to tell others, you know, the way to yeah, paradise. Commission. Great mm. Commission. So, yeah. you know, go out and do it. Yes, well, also we've got books, we have three books now, Simon's, which is From Law to Grace, um, mine hands across the ocean and obviously the CD which we've got 15 songs on but to add to that we've got this little book here which is my auntie yeah. she was a nun at Sacred Heart Convent in Dublin and she always had a heart for the poor and downtrodden and people who were, were sleeping rough and having a hard time so she left behind, when she passed away a couple of years ago, a number of poems which I picked up at her funeral service and took them back across the water from Ireland with me and they lay dormant for a couple of years and then suddenly I realised that it would be good to have all her poems and reflections, so it's poems and reflections of um, Sister Charlotte North. Really, really lovely, great poems. Yes. All, of, all about the love of Jesus. Go on. Yeah, and we, we hope to put these poems to good use and to help people in Ireland, here in Bristol, and wherever in the world this book is sold. It's on Amazon, and basically we want to feed the hungry. And if this book does really well, then who knows what we can do for the homeless that are sleeping rough on the streets around Bristol and in Dublin and in parts of Ireland and they're sleeping outside Bristol's Salvation Army believe it or not where they put their sleeping bag down at night and it's cold and really as a church we are duty bound to look after these people they're less fortunate than we are we don't Nightingale. know why yeah. so we're setting up Nightingale which is a charity in which Patricia, Charlotte, Charlotte Patricia, North's book, will hopefully go some way into helping the homeless that she always worried about so or a much. a charitable organisation, or charitable purposes. Yeah, so any of our books that sold, Hands Across the Ocean, on Amazon, my book, uh, from Law to Grace, Simon's book, we hope to help the poor and help people and, and of course the music which is on CD Baby which is 15 songs from my book and which hopefully people will buy and like at least you'll like some of them I don't even really like them all all but so yeah so we would advise you to um, help us in this new venue Poems and Reflections of Charlotte North she was a nun in the Sacred Heart Convent for many years in Dublin and she travelled around to people, was a very friendly person. There's a nice story in this book. She has four sisters and each one of her sisters is in the book and her godson and it's a, it's a sort of a family story. Her parents are in the book, um, nieces, people that, you know, I'm in the book, in the front of the book with her. Bridget, okay. Bridget did a, um, did a, um, a little bit on, e on each of her sisters and um, yeah, yeah. on um, Charlotte's godson. Yes, we, we thought we'd like to bring to, to head some of her sister's stories because they were very close and had a very caring parents. That's her sister Molly there. And her other sisters are in here as well. They had a very caring Christian praying father who really prayed with them and for them, didn't you know, I've often told you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, fathers out there, pray with your children, mm. you know, yeah. gather them round at night. Some of the times I remember as a child back in Ireland were the times my uncle used to gather us all around the kitchen after supper and kneel down and pray. Your father, let's pray for the family because it was a week of going to school and everything, making hay and doing all the jobs mm. that we do in Ireland. 
So we'd all get together and those um, I cherish those memories. And he was that kind of man, Charlotte's um, father. He was praying father and her mother. So we would say buy this book and um, it's on Amazon now for you and hopefully we can help the homeless. They won't be sleeping outside the Salvation Army Please in Bristol. Sure. Yeah, they won't be sleeping around the streets of Dublin because this book sells at 4.75 in the UK. Euro. Okay. Euro. So we hand it over to you. Together we can make a difference. Um. You know, as Christians, <coughs> united we stand and God puts a blessing, he gives us a blessing where there's unity. There God commands a blessing. Where there's disunity, we can see what's happening in the world today where families are breaking up. Families are breaking up. They're breaking up right, left and centre. And there's this core, this unity, yeah. That people won't work together, especially Christians, because God's going to deal with the house of his house first. He's going to deal with the church. And we believe it's coming is on its way in which the UK will need to turn back to God because many who think they're following him are not did you say that for me? Well, they're, they're, yeah, they're not following him as in the way in which he wants to and that's why we bring you back the day of fast and prayer yeah? 20, 20 days we've done 40 and believe you me it was well worth doing we got close to God Closer walk with God. I mm. would recommend it to everyone, wouldn't we? Mine. Yeah. Mine? Yeah. Just a closer walk with you. A closer walk with God. With Jesus. Carry on mm. now. Just put it down there. And the second thing, the second part of this video mm -hmm. is um, the, for the mentally ill. Now, we we've been approached by the pastor of the biggest church in Bristol I put this in my other video the diocesan that's the, under the bishops um, community officer and also a great guy called Alwyn Pereira who's a, mm. a, cur a curate yeah. a volunteer mm. curate um, man of God gets miracles supernatural ministry and we're mm. putting together an interview which God willing we're going to put up on YouTube in about five weeks four weeks and it's to equip the church to help the mentally ill because these leaders have recognized that the church as a whole is failing the mentally ill and they, incidentally they noted that Bridget and I have a particular inroad with them yes. um, I, I have meetings in my flat on a Wednesday night called God Knows Best and we were talking last night about the chronic um, all the all the people in my neighbourhood, which is probably common all across the Western world, inner city, high rise flats, many, many single men and I presume women as well, and this is what they're doing because I go out, you know, and evangelise, go into the shops. About six o'clock they will fill up a plastic bag with maybe eight cans of lager. They will buy a, a lottery scratch card, you know, hoping for that <laughs> paradise on earth or whatever never happens by the way they buy a pack of fags they um, and they go back to their flat that is their life okay the, and and it behoves the church to reach out to these people to reach out to, they're probably on be they are on benefit they're mentally ill they, they listen to you know rock mu whatever music and who knows what else they're doing May, maybe you know there's a lot of pornographic um, magazines that are sold where we live in, in every area you know they're getting sold I presume you can put mm -hmm. two and two together and these people need our help they as I like, yeah? yeah these are as I consider to be the real lost 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 people because yeah. they don't have jobs they're not socializing um, I don't see them with with any family or friends they're in a, in a desperate place they're mentally ill so reach out to them brothers and sisters go and knock on doors you know mm -hmm. find these people that are hidden away that don't have any friends yeah. okay they don't have any friends yeah. find these people yeah. share share Jesus with them because many of these young men take their own lives sadly mm -hmm. and the hospitals can't really deal with emotional problems with addiction and with all the things they may be into so 
there really is a need for people in the church to reach out to their community. There is. And to make a place, you know, have breakfast and bring these young men in, these women, yeah. and help them to get back on their feet because some of them will get jobs and will go on to greater things, you know. Well, they want to be saved as well, yeah. Yeah, once they've got their lives Two right minutes. and they're, they've dealt with those addictions. Yeah, and so, you know, we are an apostle and prophetess. We've got massive experience with mentally ill, so let's see if we can try and equip you if you're interested. Um, yeah. You know, you've got... Go on. Get in touch on... Uh, we have a mobile number, 0 2980 if you want to come to this meeting up in the... That's worldwide, this particular. Yeah, but the meeting in Just Bristol, contact us. Yeah. Otherwise, get in touch with other churches and see what you can do. Also, we believe um, children with autism and different um, mm, difficulties, special needs. special needs, we believe God's going to do a work among them. So let's get reaching out to those as well. There should be churches for children with needs, and I think it should start... The House of God. Mm. We're also I'm on, on Bristol Underground Church, yahoo.co.uk. Of course, you can leave a message at the bottom of this video on YouTube. Yeah. Bridget White on YouTube, Alex. Bri that's Facebook, Bridget. Sorry, Facebook. <laughs> yeah, Bridget yeah. White, Simon Alexander Farris. You can find us, we're there. So, reach out to the mentally ill. If you meet mentally ill people in your church, talk to them. Yeah, yeah. The uh, main problem for mentally ill is isolation. And they do be cut off, don't they? They are sort of not friendly. Well, we've got to say, so talk to the mentally ill, get involved. Yeah. They've been on their own for, for years. They've probably got a big Bible knowledge because they've got to do something with their time mm -hmm. and you'll find you, you can be really blessed. Yeah. The age old age, we've got, everyone's got something to offer. Yeah. It could take a while to break down into communication. We find that sometimes it takes weeks, sometimes it even takes months in which you kind of very gradually make an inroad to them and then you get, you get don't you? Yeah, you've got, you've, got to be, you've got to treat people no as normal, no. uh, as ordin as normal in a normal way, as as, as ordinary normal people. Yeah. You know, if someone had a broken leg, you wouldn't you wouldn't ostracise them or talk to them funny. Okay, they got something wrong with their head. Yeah. Big deal. Love never they're, they're still They're still human beings. Yeah, lots yeah. to offer. Yeah. Um, be you know, brave. Be strong. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Pray, and and the work, and you know, get just just reach out. As we were saying. Yes, get out of the boat. Get wet. God's going to be with you. Once you've got out of that boat, isn't it? You make an effort God to catch reach you. out, God will catch you. He yeah. will not let you fall. So, so if you meet mentally ill people or anyone sitting on their own, you don't know why they're sitting on their own, you yeah. jolly well should be friendly and yeah. go up to those people yeah. and talk to them. Even yeah. if, you know, retired people yeah. or whatever. And then secondly, get out into your neighbourhood on the streets, yeah. knock on doors, go to your mosques, whatever, seek temples, get involved with the community. Yeah, don't get offended Spread easily. Spread the gospel. If they don't speak to you first time, don't get offended easily. 